Marty Ware here from Marty's Garden. Yes, the Marty's Garden Show on YouTube. And we've got an exciting show for you today. Actually, I'm growing these chilies here. These are a long red and they're a beautiful sweet chili that's really good for pickling and things so they tell me and you know so anyway they've come up from their second generation they've come up from around the permaculture chicken coop when i was growing them before and self-sowed and then i put them into this little pot here in this container and they're ready to be repotted on into another into bigger containers so i can move them through because i'm looking at ways of actually selling the plants and producing products with the chilies in the future as I said I'm heading in a sort of like an Asian direction with my microgreens for the market and it's still a way off but we're getting there so keep watching and uh, I'll show you what I'm doing so this is some kale that's actually you know, baby leaf kale that I'm growing in a small container and it's from my mix that I've been making the compost mix and then blending it with the rice husk and vermiculite the worm castings, you know, like the worms going through the compost system and not really worrying about collecting the castings. But just look how healthy that is. And it's been a semi-shaded area and um, I've been picking from them already. And yesterday we made some, oh, well, I made some Thai beef cakes and I put this in it. It was just absolutely fabulous. So you can see how healthy things are happening on Marty's garden. So yes, the cayenne long thin chili pepper is similar heat to Tabasco and they grow to about 90 centimetres tall, so uh, two and a half centimetres to an inch, something like that. And I'm going to be growing, like I said I'm gonna, in the beginning, I said I'm going to be growing them for the market. Now they've got to go into these pots, so I'm getting everything ready, there's the pots there. There's my water bucket, so I'm going to be dipping them in. And if you look closely here, you can see that I've actually got rice husk mix through this potting mix. Now, I did actually go out and buy a, a potting mix blend. I found it was really heavy, and that um, I just wanted to lighten it up and save a bit of room because the rice husks are really good at holding moisture, and they break down over time. Whatever worms get in there and things from... Because I've got, like, just compost worms everywhere uh, they'll eat that as well and drop their castings in there and it will just give it that extra light fluffiness that I'm looking for and you know to keep these not producing so much leaf growth you want to keep your nitrogen down and get your fruit rating up now these are I'm not sure the exact size of these pots but if we get one out you can see my hand here I've just collected them now I'm going to keep them a bit shorter because I want them to fruit up a bit earlier because I want to collect the seed from them and go from there. Now I do have another lot that I've put in and there are a range of yellows, reds, oranges and different colours that I want to be using also to sell to market. And I've got some great ideas coming up in the future but I just can't share them with you just yet guys so you'll have to hang on and keep watching the show. But I'm going to keep potting them up now and show you how to do it. So I'm going to fill the mix up to about two-thirds of the way through and then I'm going to grab uh, one of the plants from in here. I'm going to grab the side one and then work my way across. Get down as deep as I can into that soil there. Now we've grabbed two plants so I'll just split them apart without hurting them too much. Now you can see that the root growth hasn't been too vigorous so they really aren't even close to being in pot bound yet. So they'll do quite well in this container. And so what I've done is, it's just removed, there's a couple of little weeds in there, just removed a couple of those little weeds that have come up. Now you can see it's just from the top, so I want to raise it up a bit higher. Because potting mix will always fall down when you water it. And so you want to get it up as high as you can, but you've got to keep an eye on how long your root system is. If your root system's longer, put less potting mix in and dig a hole down into it so the roots can go down and get down. Now I want it just below level of the top of the pot. And then I'm going to add my blend that I've made with the potting mix. Now I used a premium high grade potting mix. I didn't use anything, you know, sort of zeolite and worm castings and different things in it that just make it a really good mix. I actually blended some lime in there as well because I saw in another video that um, they like a bit of lime. And then I'm going to fill it up just a little bit higher than you normally would. Because remember it's going to drop down 
and I want this to actually fill this whole pot and produce fruit in this container. It won't be going up into another size. I may do a couple of others up into some other sizes, but I'm not in any real hurry at the moment. If they just start growing really vigorous, then for sure I will do that. Now I need to head off to the bucket watering station. The bucket watering station. All right, so we just grab our plant here drop her in now I don't have any trays saved up uh, for this to go underneath so I've got to run down the back and find something for them to sit in I've got tomato plants and everything growing everywhere but I'm just gonna really really soak this and then I'm just gonna sit it onto the table and let it drip through but normally um, you want to have a bucket underneath it as well to save any water you don't really want to waste water if you can especially in places where you know there's water safety issues you know water problems at the moment and we've got a lot of rain here at the moment this is rainwater straight out of the tank so uh the next one i do i'm going to grab the bucket and make sure that i've got it underneath and, and save that water and keep recycling it through so if you see any air bubbles coming up at the time you know that it's 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 still not ready but there's no air bubbles she's pretty ready so i'm going to let as much run through as i can I'm actually going to stick it back into the wheelbarrow of the potting mix, uh, just let the water run through as I pot them up. And I'll give you a look at them uh, as I've finished uh, potting them up in the containers. So they're all ready to roll. Uh, when you transplant, if you've got some seaweed, some liquid seaweed around, that really helps with transplanting shock. You need to keep them in the shade for a day or two if it's a hot, you know, it's hot time of year when you do it. When you do do your transplanting, you always do it in the shade and keep the roots less exposed to sun as much as possible and keep the root shock as low as possible. Now, if you're doing this in the winter or autumn times or you know, spring, then uh, it doesn't really matter if it's not real hot. Now, it's going to be about 26 here today. I think that's in the 70s. Um, so it's going to be fairly warm. So I'm going to put them in the shade for a few days and then bring them out in the sun. Now they will need at least six hours sunlight to get really good fruit on them. And you can see here, here's one of the plants here, the long cayenne pepper. Great for making all those different types of, uh, you know, they're actually a very good first versatile chili, so they tell me, and this is the second generation one. And I'll probably be taking cuttings off them as well as seed in the future and I'm going to move them around to a spot a nice spot where I'm going to just put them for a day or two while they settle in then bring them out in the Sun I've got a reflective wall white wall where the, uh, the autumn uh, Sun will hit and reflect the light back and in the afternoon the evenings that white wall stores or traps all the heat and puts the heat back on the plants and keeps them warm also uh, because we're coming into winter we got the, we last month in autumn these black pots keep the warm, roots warm too and I might even sit them on some bricks and the bricks will warm up through the day as well and do the same thing all right so no more coming in from the side <laughs> let's get a straight on angle it's been a good video eh, guys now I know it's hard to get every little bit of piece every bit of piece out to you but there's heaps of content out there about growing chilies this is the first time that I've trialed them for market and you know I'm really looking forward to developing some of these products to get out to the restaurants and to the people and developing ways that are profitable and manageable from a small backyard such as a micro farm so if you want to learn more about growing food in urban places and small spaces and micro farming then subscribe to Marty's garden there'll be a link down here if you're in YouTube or in the description if you're anywhere else and you will learn more about how to grow food fast in urban places and small spaces. Have a great day, happy gardening, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.